So I wanted to just make this just to kind of go over all the set dress and tips, tricks, little things that aren't that obvious when you first start using Unreal Engine. Somebody commented down below saying they're having issues with layout and just like organizing and moving stuff correctly, and just gaining control over the editor itself. So it's just going to be tip after trick, loads of little tiny things that no one really talks about. Oh, so tip number one here is going to be you don't need to touch the pivot to move stuff. So the pivot's always here and you can move it around, but sometimes out of view and you want to just slide this this way, you can press control plus right mouse button to go along the Y axis, control plus the left mouse button to go along the X axis, and then control plus both mouse button to go up and down. And the same works for rotate. So if you switch it to rotate, control plus right mouse button will rotate it in that direction and then press control plus X to rotate the other direction. And as well, if we turn off snapping, so the snapping's all up here, this is grid snapping, rotation snapping, scale snapping. If you turn them all off, then you can see you can rotate it nice and smoothly to whichever direction. It seems we're talking about this right now, we may as well talk about the pivot because the pivot's gone on this. So what we'll do is we'll just flatten that out. And we're going to just come up to modeling mode up here. And we're just going to come to transform, edit pivot, click center, click accept. In the center, the pivot's now baked in the center. Now that we bake the pivot to the center, if let's say we wanted to align up here with this corner, because if we see here, we move it over, and we're let's say we're trying to align it right with this, we still don't have a lot of control when we get to the edge. So what we want to do is we want to move the pivot over to here so we have more control. So all we do is we press Alt plus middle mouse button, and we can drag the pivot to where we are view. And this is only temporary; it's not baking the pivot. If you want to set it. As an offset, we can right click and go to pivot and click set as pivot offset. When you click off the object and back on, it'll remain in that area, but it's still not baked. But this gives us a lot of control over right here where we want to move stuff right in front of our view. But if you want to, if we come to edit pivot, we'll see that the pivot's still in the center. It's just an offset. So if we click right click again, we go pivot, click reset pivot offset. It's back to where the original baked pivot is. This is going to be really useful for moving stuff around and lining stuff up. And so what we're talking about here, I'm sure you've experienced this as well, where where you're moving way too fast. So you're trying to get down and see something, but you're moving way too fast and you have to go up and click the camera thing. Well, there's a shortcut here. We just hold down the right mouse button. And as we're moving, we can scroll down on the wheel to adjust our speed. So I can scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll down, and move really slow if I want and then scroll up a little bit. So you're just holding the right mouse button and scrolling at the same time. And you can see up there in the top right, my camera speed goes up and down as I use that. So yeah, this one here is like a must use all the time is you want to adjust your camera speed. This one might seem obvious or you might not know about it if you're new, but you just, if you want to line these stuff up and you want to put this, let's say, in the room way down there, but you have to keep dragging it, moving, dragging it, moving, none of that crap. Instead, just grab it, hold shift, and you move it with the camera, let go of shift, and it moves on its own. So we can just use shift to like, bring it down. You can also then press alt to rotate around it, and alt plus right mouse button to zoom. So you can press F to focus the object as well, so then you're really close. And then we can just press Shift and just bring it down to wherever you want. And then here's another really quick one that's super useful as well. Now that the pivot's, let's say, in the center of this, and we have, let's say, this one here, and it's rotated this way. And we'll just put both of them on the ground by pressing End key, so they're both on the ground. And what we're going to do is, let's say, we want this to be aligned right at the corner here. Yeah. So what we're going to do first of all is get the pivot on this one, come to the modeling tools up here, come to transform, click edit pivot, and we're just going to grab the pivot, slide it out and press control to snap it to the face. And now that we have it at the face there, yeah, we can also come down and just snap it here to this face, click accept. And now that the pivot's at the corner, what we can do is click the transform in the modeling tools and we can actually move this but use the snapping again on this. So with the new pivot, the new pivot's going to be snapped here. And we can drag it down this way and we can maybe just get a better angle. And all we need to do is drag it in here and just snap it straight to this face. And that's it. The entire mesh is completely aligned. It's nice and smoothly. Now there will be UV unwrapping, but you can also do that in the tools with the UV tools, which I'll get into in a bit. 
You can reproject these UVs to line them up properly again. So here we go, we're just going to line that up and bang. So we have something that's close enough and these UVs are a bit stretched. We can just go project UVs and just scale them down a little tiny bit on the, the dimensions. So we'll go something like that and we'll just bring this over and then we'll just click accept. And we have a nice little square UVs with two separated balls that blend together and it's nice and aligned. So you're just moving the pivot with the snap and key using the edit pivot and then moving the mesh with the transform tool in the modeling tools. And we have this little thing and it's not lined up properly. So we just press control plus middle mouse button up to the top, press F to focus so we can see this and we can just straighten it out here. And then again, we can move the middle, move the pivot by pressing alt plus middle mouse button to the center. That's how we want to line it up over here. We can just scroll in and we can just Move this and just line it right up at the wall if you want. We can just press control plus down direction and we're back here, but we know it's straight. So here's another one. If we just maybe click create here for a second, we click draw a spline and we just draw a little quick spline just to show you. If you are using spline tools and you don't want them to have tangents like this, you can just press shift T on the spline points and that's just going to straighten them out and yeah this is super useful for straightening out tangents and just getting that nice crispy corner real quick you obviously can click on the spline right click click select all spline points and then right click again and click set spline type to linear and we'll get the same result but shift t this is useful for just straightening out one point. If you want to read it quickly, you just click Shift T instead of click, right click, select point type, point type, linear. Okay, here's another cool one as well. So normally in 3ds Max and Blender and stuff like that, we can use collections to hide objects and stuff. Well, in in Unreal, we can come up here to Window, and there's a Layers panel here, and when we open that up, it's going to open next to the Outliner by default. And what you can do is you can just select these meshes. Let's say we wanted all these, or while we're talking about this, I may as well talk about this as well. So let's say you imported something from anywhere externally and you've got it in loads of different pieces, but it came in in one folder. So we'll find this here just for one quick second here. We'll go to kitchens and we'll see that all the meshes are in this folder for this selection kit but it can be really a pain in the ass to come around and click all these and try select them all. So all we do is we come here, we can use the filters, we can filter by static mesh. So there's just static meshes inside this folder. We can just shift click all of them and then we can right click and click asset actions, select actors using this asset and it's gonna select everything inside the scene using that folder and using the content browser. So now we can select everything that we just wanted right there. And so let's say we wanted to put the kitchen onto its own layer. Now we have it selected. We can click create empty layer. We'll call it kitchen. And we'll just click right. And we'll click add selected actors to selected layer. Add selected actors to the selected layers. And now what you'll see is if we wanted to remove the kitchen at any point, we can just turn off the kitchen entirely using the layers panel. And we can just turn it back on at any time and so we can do this for entire floors and this is also useful for when we're rendering out stuff and we want to hide certain foreground elements or background elements it, let's say your outliner is absolutely packed of objects and you want to collapse all the categories in one quick click you can shift click the very top one and then just click it single click it and everything will be collapsed and the same goes for backwards so if we shift click it again we shift click open it it'll be unpacked. So shift click, single click to collapse everything. Alternatively, we can go to the little sentence button and click collapse all. And I like doing this on the post process volume. So if we go to the post process volume here and you know, there's lots of details in it. So it's good to just come to the little sentence, click collapse all categories. And then you have a nice little single menu where we can look at what we want and just open each thing individually. So yeah, it's just a lot cleaner and easier to manage. And then while we're talking about that as well, we may as well talk about managing multiple details panels at one time. So at the minute, if you click post process volume, but you want to open a light as well, like in the details panel, you 
you have to go and switch between post process volume and then the light and then you have to go back to the post process volume etc the way to solve this is we can just lock the post process volume here using this little tiny key here just lock it and then we can come up here to window and open a second details panel and this one's unlocked so the one over here is locked still as you can see here and the one new one is unlocked so when we click in the outliner and we switch to let's say another object like a light let's say this rect light i think this is the one that's in the room yet so we click that and you'll see we have a second details panel here now we might just dock this in here for now so we go to global contrast maybe and we'll just pump up the contrast and you can see i can tweak the contrast here but i can also adjust the intensity of the light at the same time because we have two details panels open and this is what makes it really powerful is been able to open multiple ones of these and tune in the way you want this to look and this also applies for multiple content browsers multiple viewports etc the window up here just open an extra windows can be really useful so the next big tip trick for layout set design and stuff is using the actor palette the actor palette's a plugin so we have to come up to edit plugins search for actor you'll see this here called actor palette we need to take that click restart so once it's enabled we can come up to tools we can come to actor palette create an actor palette one and you'll see here you get the option to choose a level once we've enabled the actor palette we can come to tools we can come to actor palette click actor palette one give us the option to choose a level so we can open up any level let's say we open up demo map here for a second and you'll see we have access to these objects but what this allows us to do is select an object and just drag it straight into your scene here so we'll dock this for a second again we'll dock it over here next to the details panel and we can go around and it's unlit at the minute if we press alt 4 you can see that we're here it's going to be low quality viewport now as well because it's only an actor palette but now if we wanted to drag anything in we can bring things from any level into another level and straight away start to set dressing your scene so let's say we want to bring the chair in you can just bring the chair in from that level and so you can lay out all your things so if you add a pack let's say to your project and it's got a, a demo level or like an overview layout pack you can just use the actor palette, open up the level, and then set dress your scene using the actor palette. It's a perfect example of the kind of meshes and stuff that you get whenever you come through Datasmith, right? We'll just bring this in for a second. The pivot's gone on it, so we're just going to edit pivot, click center, boom, bake the pivot into the center of the object. And you can see here this weird shading that's going on on this object. And it's just not the way it's meant to look. So how we fix it? And this is going to apply to lots of meshes that you import into Unreal. Like I've experienced this with all my SketchUp models, even Blender models sometimes. And I just normally recompute the normals for the mesh if it looks weird in Unreal Engine. And how we do that is we just come up to the modeling mode up here. Right here, modeling, boom. Come down to attributes and we just click normals. And you'll see here you get this preview that looks really messed up. But as soon as we click accept, the shading issue is gone. So now it's shaded properly. And again, if we just revert it, that's what it looked like before. And here's a perfect example. So when this kitchen was imported, they all looked like this. And then after the normals, they look like this. And you can just see the difference is massive. So we move this, even if we move this around, the shading just stays the exact same. And it's just a joke. But as soon as you click normals, accept, the shading's good. So there'll be three things down in the description. If you want to see more videos like this or you want to see anything in particular, just give us a shout, leave a comment, drop a like, let me know. Feedback is always appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.